Hi guys, welcome back to Mash Tips. In this video, we are going to give you some tips for Nest Thermostat users. is the base plate when we connect the display here the display pin goes to here depends on your ac system it might be a different wiring diagram here please check the manual before doing the wiring now this is the display here is a connector it goes to the base plate equipment this will give you some idea about your wiring diagram that's currently uh, set on your base plate and if they have any wire loose or if they have any issue for the connection or anything when you check here you can see in a red color whatever the missing wire so this is the current wiring diagram i use here uh, for y1 for selecting heat and cool and the g for fan and all details you will be able to see here so once your wiring diagram is perfect you can see exactly the same base plate wiring diagram on the screen then the display this is a setting where nest thermostat will decide when does it want to turn on the display there are a couple of things when it decide to show the display the first one is far sight far sight means when it show you that you are walking around the room then it can turn on the display to you another one is wake on approach that will determine when you reach to the nest thermostat then it will turn on the display the last option is wake on press the display will be turned off until you press on it then it will wake up all these options you can display these details here the first one is a target temperature it will show you that the target temperature that it is trying to reach the next one is the current temperature it will display current temperature inside your home or you can set analog clock that's i already set here or digital clock or weather This one is an echo mode that's going to save some energy and a couple of bucks on your monthly bill. You can set a preset temperature for heating and cooling. And if you start on echo, then it's going to follow that temperature. So it's here you can set the echo temperature, whatever the settings you need. So just for setting for echo, I set here heat to 60 degree. Fahrenheit that means my heater will turn on when the home temperature come down to 60 degree also I want to make to cool my home if I'm away from home and nobody's here I set my cool to 79 means it's going to kick in my cooler when the room temperature reach to 79 degree next menu is here is a schedule menu where you can set a particular temperature to turn on where you can set a particular temperature to cool the home or heat the home and you can set in days or weeks or every hour it's according to you even you can change the temperature here by pressing this button i would recommend to use your phone or nest website set to the calendar and schedule over there Nest Sense will provide you a couple of other options to save your electricity bill. The auto schedule means that's gonna set your Nest into echo mode and adjust the schedule according to the movement at your home or it will learn the pattern and it will automatically control your AC system. Then time to temperature, that's gonna show you the estimates, how long it will take to reach into that temperature once you set a new temperature other than the room temperature then nest will show you how long it's going to take to reach into that temperature then early on that means if your home is it's very cool temperature or it's extremely hot you can set this early on at a particular time to turn on to activate your cooling or heating system 30 minutes before then heat pump balance that's for the power you can set for maximum savings mode or in a balanced mode between the comfort and savings or you can set for a maximum comfort. Then cool to dry is another feature. 
that your thermostat is gonna use additional cooling to reduce the indoor humidity. The sunblock settings that's using for when the sun is shining on the thermostat, when the sun directly hit on the thermostat display, the temperature sensor may change. If you install this Nest thermostat where the sunlight directly fall on the sensor, then you have to turn this on. When the thermostat is running on a power saving mode or it's a saving some energy bill, then the leaf sign will show you on the display. And the airwave is an additional feature that's gonna save some power here. This is the history. You can check how long your heater was turned on or how long your cooler was turned on in past couple of days. You can see all the details here. It's showing how much time my heater run on January 1st. I can see that there is no usage for the heater, but the cooler was turned on for around 45 minutes. Then January 2nd, that didn't use that much. So you can see all the history here. And you will get some idea about, uh, you will get some notification if the weather was extremely cold or hot. So that case to run this. Then the next one is fan. The, this one is controlling the air handler fan and you can manually turn on to run the fan for a more airflow in your home. If you wanna manually turn on for 15 minutes, 30 minutes or couple of hours, you can turn on and set for that. For the fan schedule, you, you can turn on your air handler fan to run in a particular schedule. You can set any time always or any particular date and you can set a start time and end time for your air handler fan. Home away assist screen and this is going to be useful when you set the echo temperature. There is a motion sensor here so it will also check if they have any movement at home and if it is not then it will automatically set back to echo temperature. If you want to add a pin here, four digit code here, so nobody else will be able to change the temperature or settings without that pin code. Okay, so let me set zero, 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 zero. And if I continue here, then you can see a lock sign here. When I press on it, it will ask to enter the pin to unlock. Zero, then unlock. So now you will be able to unlock it or anytime when you wanna change any settings over there, it will ask you to enter the pin code. So that's an additional feature when kids around the home are changing your nest thermostat all the time, you can set that pin lock there. You have to click on equipment. This will show you your wiring diagram. If you see any issue here, it will mark in a red color. If you are good, then click on continue. Here, you can check all the settings here. Let me set it here to test my fan. And the fan is already kicked in and I can hear one sound. So it's uh, connected to G-Wire and we will show you all those information here. So I set done and testing fan is completed. Similarly, you can check any other options here. Just one more thing I wanna check here. The heat should be on or you what are the wires already connected over there so done and if i select auxiliary heating it will show you what are the colors over there and here it's either g w2 or auth wires those are the controlling this auxiliary heating and make sure all those are in place then you can click on done have installed in sensors and what would be the temperature for the sensor that information will show here here is the information for your nested thermostat it's a power settings and you can see the battery internal battery voltage play voltage is coming around 335.77 then the next one is display then it will show you where you the downstairs that's I already entered here so it can locate where your nest thermostat is then the software version and model version and the serial number device CAD and also there is a base 
plate information you can see here uh, additional software version for the base plate and, and that you can see this is for checking the software version of your nest thermostat currently it's a 6.1 and you can have more details if you check here there's a last update date august 24 and if you want to try you can try to update here and it will check for updates so yeah it will check for the updates and if they have any updates it will automatically update or you will get a message here this is a nest temperature sensor this is the back plate for nest temperature sensor and in the back plate that's powered with the cr2 battery and when you see any low battery indication you're supposed to replace this battery with a cr2 so when you want to add additional nest thermostat sensor you have to use your nest app and where you can add this sensor now you can see that the nest temperature sensor is already detected by nest thermostat then you have to just to click on ok so when i install that additional sensor for this nest thermostat i can enable the schedules that means in the morning you, you will get few options here morning time midday evening and night time so in the morning you can ask nest thermostat to use this built-in temperature sensor to check the room temperature and turn on the air handler accordingly in the midday i can set that okay i can i want to set the same this thermostat to check the temperature and even for the evening i want to use the same thing i set my temperature sensor into my master bedroom so in the night time i want to check the master bedroom temperature and control my air handler accordingly so i want to change this one into the new sensor the sensor i named as upstairs and i'm going to set this one so only the night time the nest thermostat will check for the temperature sensor that i installed in my master bedroom and control the air handler accordingly you can manually restart the nest thermostat here you can reset those uh, schedules that you already set on your nest thermostat or uh, you can reset the away status if you move your nest thermostat to a different place for example first floor to second floor the nest already learned uh, what time you will be away uh, and what you will, you will be in home so when you move around this thermostat into a different place that need to learn again so i would rec recommend when you move the nest thermostat you have to reset these settings too and when you click on all settings that means it is going to erase all the details and the nest thermostat will uh, back to the factory settings if you see any error like this e74 and usually it will say that arch wire power not detected as usual the power would be around 28 volt like this but if the power is missing then you see a typical screen like this so you can verify the diagram and if power is missing then you can see red color there that means it's missing and something wrong over there and if you click on continue then you can see more technical information here about the power and now the battery is not charging and you can see all input voltage is set to 2.01 volt that means there is no input voltage or there is no supply voltage to the nest thermostat what would be the reason for that there is a simple fix for this case of uh, rh power missing probably your ac system is clogged and uh, all the water uh, it is supposed to drain away from your ac system automatically but unfortunately the water outlet is clogged and there is an additional floating switch on your air handler and i will show you how to fix it and the problem for this rh wire missing there is a floating switch connected to your drainage pipe and the water is supposed to drain uh, through this pipe and empty the water properly but if there is a block or something like that the water will 
uh, come through this pipe to this floating switch and the switch will go up so when we get excess water and if your drainage is blocked then the switch position will be like that usually to work properly the floating switch would be in this position so if it is in this position then the supply contact here and the RH wire will get the power over there but when the pipe fill with water then the floating switch will go up and it will disconnect the power so you have to clean up your draining system then put it back the switch here then everything would be normal and if you drain the water properly then this and switch back to position and you can see that error went off if you see any low voltage issue and your nest thermostat is permanently dead you can take out from the wall and you can charge with a micro USB adapter here. This is almost dead thermostat display and there is no battery voltage over there. So you can, it will take a couple of minutes to charge the battery and it will start to show the display on here. So uh, there are a couple of things you have to notice. This is the communication port that directly goes to the base plate and here is the port micro usb port so if you have a micro usb cable you can insert this cable here connect the other end to a usb power adapter here connect your power supply and you have to wait a couple of minutes to charge the display unit once it's charged it's gonna boot the operating system over there and now you can see it's loaded google logo so this is the way you can bring up any dead nest thermostat unit to live simply by connecting a micro usb cable to the unit you can remove the micro USB cable here then still you can see the display the battery is charged enough then you can attach and make sure this connector goes into the wall adapter thank you for watching the video and please subscribe and click on the bell icon for latest updates